Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden and part four of my Fleece to FO series. So today I'm going to be talking about my uh, fin fleece and I have started knitting, obviously, I have started knitting a sweater out of my fin fleece and um, I think a lot of you are going to be really shocked to see how much progress I've made. I have been absolutely, I want to say obsessed <laughs> and I haven't been able to put this project down. I have knit on nothing else. I haven't even looked at my like color work mittens. I have some new socks that I'm going to share with you later. Uh, on a on a podcast episode, not today, and um, and I haven't even thought about any of my other projects. I have been 100% uh, focused on this sweater, and I've just been so in love with it, and I just can't stop. I can't put it down. Um, staying up way too late, and just any any time I have the chance, I am knitting this sweater. So um, I reached a good stopping point and I thought I would share um, what I've done so far. Uh, the sweater that I'm making, if you can't already tell, uh, I think it's pretty obvious. And um, yeah, just share some of the details and uh, hopefully pretty soon I'm going to have a finished sweater and I'll put together a whole, um, like, I'm going to do like a what's the word like a montage what like like a slideshow with my journey and photos um from beginning to end and have sort of like a little celebration of my first time uh taking a fleece and making it into a sweater <laughs> you guys i can't i can't even tell you how excited i am and how happy um how much joy this uh project has brought me and um Gosh, I'm just so in love with it. So anyways, let's start like talking about um, what the sweater is. So this is the pattern. It's the Arboreal uh, sweater by Jennifer Steingass. And um, I feel a little bad. I've previously said her name as Jennifer Steinglass. And it's not, uh, there's no L in there. I just added that in <laughs> in a, in a older video. Um, so I feel a little bit bad about that. Um, Jennifer Steingass is her name and she is a very if you don't already know you probably already know she has been uh, so so popular recently with um let me take this out of the out of my sleeve protector she has just been so popular lately with her color work sweater designs she has quite a few color work sweater designs patterns and um everybody has just been so in love with her uh, sweaters and me and me included I'm um, I have three of her patterns I did that she does like these uh, buy two get one free uh, deals on Ravelry and so I did that and this was one of the patterns that I bought and um, I bought this one this is probably the one that I loved the most um, I also really love the fern and feather I actually that's one of the ones I don't have but I would like to buy um, the, her fern and feather sweater, but that's another, another topic. Let's, let's stay on track. So this is the Arboreal and it is this really beautiful leaf pattern. Now, um, this hasn't been blocked or anything, so this will look even better when I, um, steam it or, uh, I might wet block it or steam it. We'll see. I'm thinking maybe I'll, should probably wet block it, but, um, the color work will even out even more. And I really think this is some of my best color work. You guys, I can't even. Okay, so this is the Arboreal by Jennifer Steinglass. And Arboreal means um, something to do with forest. I have to look it up. If I if I do, I'll put it on screen what, the, what this name means. Um, and I, since I first saw this pattern, I have been you know, really drawn to it. I love the leaf pattern. I'm very drawn to nature. Um, you know, Crafty Garden um, is a is a marriage of two things that I love. I love gardening. I love being outside in nature. I love growing things. I love, um, I have fruit trees and I just love, and the fall in Vermont and um, I live in Vermont. I think I skipped that. Did I skip that? I live in Vermont with my husband, our two dogs and our cat. I skipped that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this just, 
this just really speaks to me. I love this pattern. It's very simple, but still really beautiful. And um, I have been daydreaming about making this sweater, um, I think, since I first saw it. So, <laughs> so I'm so excited that it's, um, it's happening and I'm so close. I only have sleeves, my little bare pale arms. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have finished the body and I'll stand up in a second and show it to you. But first I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how I decided there's my, look, you can see my tail right there. Um, I thought I'd tell you about um, how I decided to knit it. So um, first I started with the darkest color, which is this really, really gorgeous chocolate brown. And if you don't know, this is a series. So this is the, um, this is my fleece to FO series. And I have um, previous videos where I talk about um, washing and sorting and spinning and prepping and everything that went into um, making my fleece to sweater, my fleece to finished object. So um, if you want to check those out, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and link, I have um, the video uh, from uh, Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival and my Rhinebeck video for my first time going to both festivals actually. Um, I think I'm gonna put those in the playlist for my Fleece to FO series because um, both of those, I were, it's the first time I talked about buying this, my very first fleece, this Finn fleece. And then the second fleece was the Corydale fleece that I bought at Rhinebeck. So I'm going to link those in my playlist too. If you want, if you haven't already seen those, you can, um, you can skip forward to the part where I talk about buying the fleeces because that's part of the journey too. I think so. Okay, so um, all of this came from one sheep. He was a thin ram lamb, um, about five, six months old, from a Vermont farm. And um, yeah, this was one fleece. It was a one and a half pound fleece. And um, I think I had just under a pound of clean um, carded Rolex, uh, hand carded Rolex. So um, really not a lot. A fiber here for making a sweater. I was definitely being really, really brave, not only choosing to make a sweater, but to make a colorwork sweater where I'm using like double the yarn through this portion, through the yoke. So, oh, this is also, I'm like super excited. So this is also my first yoke sweater that I've knit, not started, because um, I have the Radari sweater that I knitting for my husband and I haven't finished yet. Um, oops. And, um, so that was the first one I started, but I haven't gotten to the yoke section yet. So this is the first, cause that one's bottom up. Uh, this one was top down. And so this is the first yoke that I've ever knit. And it's so beautiful. I love it. So I started with the, um, the darkest color and I'll insert a photo so you can see the gradient of the yarn. I have chocolate, um, kind of a, a lighter charcoal gray color and then a gradient of three um, grays. And so what I chose was the the darkest color, which is the chocolate. And then in the middle of that photo, the middle sort of gray color is what I chose for um, the contrast color for the leaves. And I chose the middle one. I, I thought about choosing the lightest color, but I decided to go with the middle one because, um, uh, it's a, this is a spinning term that, and even some spinners don't like this word, but grist or yards per pound. I calculated the, um, the grist for all of the skeins that I, or the hanks that I made. Did you guys watch that? Christy Glass Manch video and the guy was like, they're Hanks, but everybody says skein. It's like a universal term. Anyways, so the Hanks, um, and <laughs> I'm like so I'm like off track. Um, they had, so the dark chocolate and the medium of the, of the grays, um, the one in the, the middle of the lighter grays, um, had the closest grists. They were like, like maybe 50 something, um, yards per pound away from each other. They were really close. Um, so I thought that they would 
do the best right next to each other. And that was kind of my thought process behind that. So then I knit as much of the uh, chocolate as I possibly could. I have, this is the project bag I've been using. This is the very first stow bag that I ever made and I sewed this. This is a stow bag pattern um, by Grainline Studios. And this is the first one I've made two of these. And I have all of my goodies in here. Um, and so I'll show you the little bit of chocolate that I have left. So this is all of the chocolate color that I have left. And um, so yeah, so that was the, the first section was the yoke with the chocolate and then this color work. And then I faded it into the next darkest color. So I'll show you what I have left. I've already split these up for doing the sleeves. So this is the next color right here. And so actually I didn't do the fading stripes that you can see right here. So I just started with this charcoal color. And then, so I went with the darkest of the grays, which I believe is this one. And I split all of the remaining yarn into um, as best as I could the same amount. Um, sometimes I wish I had a really, really super duper accurate scale. And mine's good, but it could be even more accurate, I think. Um, so anyway, so I split these up. This is this next color right here. This is the darkest of the lighter gray grays. And then um, this was the, this is all that I have left. Um, Oops, this is all that I have left that just came a little bit unwound um, from the color work. So I did put a teeny bit in, in here. I'll stand up in a second. I did put a teeny bit in the body of the sweater, but I didn't have a lot left over after doing the, um, the color work. So, and this is what I have left for the sleeves. And then the very, very lightest color, which um, I wanted to preserve as much of this as I could. I haven't split this up because I finished um, recently, I bound off the, um, the, the cuff at the bottom, the, the hem, and um, I haven't, so what I'll do is I'll weigh this and then I'll use my ball winder to pull from the center until uh, it'll be sitting on the scale and then until it weighs exactly half or as close as I can get to half. And then I try to carefully find the center and I'll just pull it apart and then um, wind the rest into another cake. So I'll have, I will have two, what I'll do is I'll end up creating two little cakes like this. Little bitty mini cakes um, so that I have the same amount, as best as I can, um, the same amount of yarn um, for the sleeves. So this is, let me take all of my needles out. So I'll show you. This is all of the yarn that I have, whoo, don't fall out. This is all of the yarn that I have left for the sleeves. And of course it just went rolling. Um, it'll have to sit there for a second. So that's all I have left for the sleeves. And I'm really, really nervous that I'm not gonna have enough um, I think, you know, maybe I'll be able to get to three quarter length, but I would really, really prefer that I be able to have a, um, I'd really like to have a long sleeve sweater because I think this is going to be such a nice warm sweater that, um, if I have, if it is a long sleeve sweater, then I'll be able to, you know, maybe wear it over a shirt and almost treat it like a light jacket, um, or not and, and just have it as a sweater, but I don't know, I, I'm really thinking that I do really want the long sleeves. And, um, you know, I have what I have. Oh, so, <laughs> yes, I just realized. So, I was kind of like freaking out about it a little bit and really, really nervous and worried. And then I remembered that I had a little bit of fleece that I had pulled aside and decided that maybe I wouldn't put, um, that I wouldn't use for the sweater. Because I thought, I thought that maybe it wasn't quite as good of quality. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't quite as good. And I thought, well, maybe I'll leave that out. And there wasn't a lot of it. 
So I didn't think it would be a big deal at the time, um, but I realized that, hey, you know, I do have that little bit left over. Maybe I can make it work. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm just going to spin it. So I carded it into Rolex because I hadn't done that. And um, then I spun it up. So I have this little bitty section and that'll definitely fit in with the, with the grays, maybe right after the darkest of the lightest grays. Um, and I don't know, who knows, maybe that it'll be just enough to push me to, uh, to long sleeves. And these, um, these come down pretty far. And I think once I block them and everything, they, they will like stretch down a little more. Um, yeah, you see my little green ties where I'm like holding them on the, my, my live stitches. <laughs> so yeah, um. I spun that up and I'm just like crossing my fingers that I'll have enough for long sleeves. I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really going to be playing yarn chicken. And, um, I, you know, I have an idea if it doesn't work out and I definitely don't have enough. I have an idea. I do have the business card for the farmer. Um, this is Buddy. So this is Buddy's fleece and, um, the farmer, her name is Katie. Her and her husband have registered Finn sheep here in Vermont. And so I would love to go pay Katie a visit. Uh, that may or may not be happening. Wink, wink. <laughs> and um, and uh, so I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll be buying some more Finn wool. Another Finn fleece. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> so... So yes, so that's that's the next big thing. All right, so let me stand up and show you already. Um, so here's my sweater, and I just put this little, um, like a little tank top under it. But this is my um, sweater, so you can see the. Let me sink down a little bit. You can see the fading that happened. I just tried to use as much of it as I could while still leaving some for the sleeves, and I just did like sort of an educated guess as far as where to stop and stuff. And all of this like striping that's happening in here is just natural variation in the the colors of the fleece and um, the roll lags and stuff. So you can see the two fading sections that I have. So I did 10 uh, stripes here. So there's like five, um, so like sets of two. So the so there's 10 stripes there. And then same thing down here um, where I faded from this, um, well, the darkest color, I used a little bit of the medium color in the striping and then finished it out with the lightest color. So the lightest color is here at the bottom. And this hasn't been blocked or anything. So I think actually this will probably, um, I think it will stretch out some once I block it. So here's the back. That's what the back looks like. If I can sink down anymore. Look. <laughs> There's the back. <laughs> and I really like the length. It's a good length. Um, if I pull this up. See, it's a good length, I think. If I bring my arms up, it's still... Um, these are slightly high-waisted jeans, but I think, yeah, like I said, I think some of this will... Um, block. Uh, I think it'll grow a little bit. I think. I'm not sure. So, so yeah, that's my sweater and I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Are you shocked? Are you shocked at how far I've gotten? I'm a little bit shocked myself. Like, I can't believe that I've gotten this far so fast, but that's what happens when you knit uh, monogamously and you don't knit on like 10 projects at once, which I'm kind of guilty of doing sometimes. Um, I, so I think I just realized I forgot to tell you something. So here's my mess of needles. So I've been using, um, these, I think, uh, these are Addy maybe turbos. Um, they're slightly pointy and this is a size US three. And uh, the information on here is pretty worn off. I think that's a 3.25 millimeter. I'm reading it upside down. 3.25 millimeter US3 and it's a 40 inch 
uh, length circular needle. That's what I've used for the color work and the body. And for the rib, so what? Well, well, actually, for the um, for the garter collar and for the rib, I used a Haya Haya Sharp uh, US two. And actually, the Haya Haya is a really nicely printed. So that's a 2.75 millimeter. And that's what I used for the collar and the ribbing. And then as a, um, a try-on needle, I have, I think this is a 60 inch, can't even see the ends. This is a 60 inch, I think, um, US 2. I didn't use this for any of the knitting. I just would slip all of the stitches over and then try it on and be like, oh, maybe I'll make it. And then I'd knit a little bit more and then be like, I have to try it on again. And I'd slip all the stitches over and then I'd try it on and I'd be like, oh, and I kept showing my husband, I'm like, look. And he's like, it doesn't look any different. I was like, I knitted like two inches. <laughs> um, and then I was so happy that when I, um, when I finished the, um, when I bound off, that um, I had this much left over because I was so afraid that that I would like have to use all of it to get to a decent length so that I wouldn't have like some like midriff sweater or something. But um, I had some left over. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I talked about the sweater pattern and the needles and the process that I did. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video and um, Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching, and keep keep your eyes your eyes peeled. <laughs> your um, uh, stay tuned for the uh, the next episode of my fleece to fo series because um, I'm positive that I'll probably be done with this sweater. Hopefully, I mean crossing my fingers. Let's not jinx jinx myself. And I might have some pretty cool content to go with it. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers. I don't know. You know, I don't want to like promise something and have it not happen. So there might be some cool stuff that I get to add in to that, um, my like final finished object video. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.